You've been exploring these ruins for days, and each new room yields the same discovery. More bronze statues, seemingly randomly placed. The deeper you explore, the more you begin to feel like these statues are watching your every move. What secrets do they hold, and who placed them here? Wait, did one of them just move? Hey guys, welcome back to Black Magic Craft. Random, unpainted, unusable miniatures. You know what I'm talking about. Most of us have one of these, a box or a drawer full of unpainted miniatures. And inside that box are some minis that get passed over every single time you reach in to grab something to paint. These are the minis that will never get painted. Maybe it's because it's a mini that you only have one of and it's a monster that should be in a horde. Maybe it's a crappy sculpt that you don't really like, or maybe it's just a creature that doesn't fit the theme of your game. But for whatever reason, they sit there forever alone. This was starting to drive me nuts. It was actually a bit of a burden. So I knew I needed to come up with a way to use these misfit miniatures. Then a few days ago, it finally clicked. Statues, a really simple fix. Statues can be anything and they are so useful in games. They can simply add visual interest to a setup. They can be used for interactive puzzles and they can drive great plot hooks. The best part is turning these random minis into statues gets them out of the box and onto the table where they belong. So let's build some statues. I got to work selecting some minis that really needed to be repurposed. Some of these had come from the box of goodies that Blanco sent me, and some of them have just been sitting in my collection for years. These Pegasus minis were a perfect example. They weren't very nice, and I don't think I'd ever need them as actual Pegasus minis in my game, but they would make fantastic statues. These two random Asian themed miniatures would likely never make sense as characters in my Northern European type setting, but again, would make fantastic statues. I had these two Wanty minis that I doubt would ever see use on their own. I'd rather get several that match and paint them up together for actual monster miniatures. The humanoid minis could stay on their bases as is. They would work fine, but the Pegasus minis needed something as the base. I grabbed these large flat WizKids bases that I keep on hand. When I base my WizKids minis, I like to switch them to Reaper bases, but I always keep these ones for times like this. I used some Milliput, it's a two-part epoxy putty, to sculpt a decorative base that would also help to hold the figures in place. I sculpted a crude rock for the bottom legs to stand on. I didn't worry about making these look realistic. Because this was going to be a statue, it would actually look better if there was some tooling marks in the putty, as real statues often look this way at the base. Because of the mix of materials and plastics, I primed them all using Vallejo Surface Primer. This stuff seems to bond really well to all plastic types and never has any bad reactions. It's meant as an airbrush primer, but I've always had good success just brushing it on. If you're gonna be doing a lot of these, you might wanna save your more expensive miniature paints and use basic craft paints. Since these would be statues, not actual creatures, it doesn't matter if the thicker paint obscures some details. I really like this bronze metallic from Craftsmart. It doesn't apply very well directly over black, so it's better to undercoat it with a similar non-metallic color like raw sienna. If you undercoat with this color, the metallic will go on much better and probably only need one coat. Even with just the one metallic coat, these already start to look believable. I do like to do a dry brushing with a gold metallic to highlight all the edges. Now you could leave them like this, but personally, I prefer them to look a lot more aged. Adding some washes will really make them look more realistic. If you want them to have a newer, gilded sort of gold look, giving them a wash with something like Citadel's Reichland Flesh Shade will help with that. It still gets in all the low spots to add dimensionality, but it won't make them look grimy and old. 
Of course, you probably want some to look old and patinaed, so for those, a black wash is in order. To give the statues that nice bronze vertigrass look, or vertigris, vertigrass, I don't know, someone will correct me in the comments, I'm sure, I created a wash using a mix of aqua blue and lime green. You sort of have to eyeball the color and look at some reference photos, but this patina has a very specific color and it's pretty easy to get something that looks right. I watered down the paint a lot and added some dishwasher rinse aid to help with surface tension. I applied a very, very heavy coat to the entire piece. You can't be afraid to overdo this. It will look like way too much when it's wet, but once it's dry, it will look great. I've tried doing this effect several different ways, including dry brushing in the past, and I think this wash method has the best results I've ever achieved. The only problem is that it did seem to rehydrate some of the black wash and cause a weird texture. It may be useful to clear coat the piece before applying this wash. To bring back some of the highlights, I gave everything a light dry brushing with the original bronze base color. You don't want to overdo this, you just want some of the highest points to look slightly polished. One of these statues was just begging for some bling, so I used some cheap plastic crystals on the eyes and on the back where there was this weird empty nook. I finished off the pieces by giving them a clear coat of Krylon's Crystal Clear Matte Varnish. I'm really happy about this project. Not only is it the most successful I've ever been with painting bronze and patina, but it got some random stuff out of my unpainted mini box. Of course, depending on the types of minis you have, you could do all sorts of different statues. You could make iron ones, marble ones, stone ones, whatever. If you need to pick up any crafting supplies for your next build, head over to blackmagiccraft.ca. There I have my essential equipment store where I link to all of this stuff that I use and recommend. It's a great place for beginners to start and those are affiliate links so purchasing through them helps fund these videos. The other way you can help fund these videos is by supporting Black Magic Craft on Patreon. It's the donations from those people graciously given there that allow me to dedicate all my time and efforts into this channel and these videos for this community. Community. I'd love to have you as the newest member of the Black Magic Craft Fellowship. There you go, guys. That is how you can take some random misfit miniatures and turn them into something usable at your game table. And that's how you can paint bronze statues. I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button and let me know in the comments section below. What do you guys do with those random minis that sit in a box unpainted for a year? If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit subscribe and check out my back catalog of other cool videos. I got lots of terrain building and miniature painting videos to help you get started if you're new to the hobby. That's it for this week, guys. I will see you again next week. Cheers.